Friends, I bought a drop bar bike. I know, I know, it doesn't have a rack and it doesn't have any fenders. And I thought when I saw it, boy, that thing looks like it could bunny hop a log. That's what that bike is for. And it looked a little small, but I flipped the stem over and rolled the bars back and moved the shifters back and the fit is actually just right, even though it looks like a tiny little 90s mountain bike. So I totally get why people would say, well, if you get a gravel bike, why don't you just get a 90s mountain bike and put drops on it? I totally get it. I can see it. Like, I can totally see it. So if you've been here before, you know that I've said things about, well, I like prefer a bike that has is more useful than just a... Uh, but I'm in the danger of pigeonholing myself into like commuter bike guy. As much as I do appreciate those machines, I don't want to pigeonhole myself into that. I want to have that spur of the moment, throw a bag over your shoulder and take a rip to the, to the grocery store. Or I want to try to use a bike in a way that's different than I normally do. Than I normally do. And this bike I got from my local bike co-op for very, very, very inexpensive. So it helps the co-op, it helps the community, and it allows me to enjoy a bicycle in a different way. And I think that I've always hated drop bars because of the reach. So this tiny little bike that somehow fits uh, works great for me so far. It is a Redline Conquest Touring. And I think that just means that they put a triple on the front instead of a double. I don't know. And I thought that Redline made BMX bikes. I don't know. So I thought that I would approach this bike in a different way than I normally do. Instead of losing my mind in excitement and saying, I'm going to put this on it and do this and do this. I thought I'm going to ride it. I'm going to ride it and see what bugs need worked out of it. And then ride it some more and figure out what I like about it and what I don't like about it. So what I've figured so far I found a shifting issue and I replaced the ferrule and the last little section of shifting cable housing. But in doing that, I thought, well, I'm going to take the drivetrain off completely and clean it. So I took it to work and I cleaned it in the Swami box, which is the uh, solvent tank. And I brought it home and ran it through the ultrasonic cleaner and it came out spotless. And I put it back on and adjusted the shifting ever so much. And it worked well. And I noticed that when you're in the smallest ring in the front and the largest ring in the rear, the derailleur will drag or touch the cassette. And the B-limit screw is at its max, so there's no adjustment. So maybe the chain's too long? I'll have to check. The other problem with the drivetrain I noticed is the front derailleur was shifted all the way down to the smallest ring will hit the frame. So perhaps the spindle is too short. Maybe somebody worked on it before I got it. Don't know. It's a very, very smooth bottom bracket though. An FSA, I don't know. I thought they made middle of the road stuff, but 
It's very, very smooth, very chrome. And then I rode it to work a little ways. And in the cold, I found that the, the shifters would gum up. Oops. Whoa, where's my shifting? Where's my shifting purpose? Okay, you need new cables. Which is not uncommon. You all know more about this than I do. You know that old Shimano shifters, the grease will get sticky and tacky and, and gum up. So I sprayed a little Akapuki in there to free them up and then a little bit of spray grease. And it worked. So I thought that, uh, I don't know what I thought, but I thought it would be really gr a fun bike to ride. It's l pretty lightweight and easy to throw over the shoulder. It's a drop bar bike. That's so weird for me. I think what appealed to me was the, the look of it. That it, like I mentioned, looks like it should bunny hop a rock and boulders and go fast. I found that it's very quick. Like it's easy to get it up to speed and get moving real fast but it doesn't seem like it's good at maintaining that speed. Like it's more work to maintain that speed. And I feel like if it were a bigger, longer wheelbase like I'm used to, it would be better at it, but I might be totally off, you know, my untrained eye. So it's a lot of fun. And I thought that um, I'll keep it without fenders and a rack maybe throw a bag over the bars or some kind of small little thing. I think it would have done that gravel loop that I did in Cook Forest. I think it would have done that real well. But I don't think I want to take it on a hundred miler. Not yet. Maybe someday. So maybe you could find a bike at your local bike co-op that would help your community. And maybe you could find something that you like a lot for not a lot of money at all, instead of worrying about buying a new bike, even though the industry's in the tank right now. And we all know that because you can see all the videos of the guys holding their face and their hands on the, in the thumbnail. Come on, come on. Um, it, it's going to be okay. And the bike co-ops will probably all be there if we, you know, it's, it's fun to put that to use. And it's fun to get a neat little bicycle to mess around with for not a lot of money at all. And I thought, boy, as I worried about it being too small, but I thought, boy, if this doesn't work out the way I want it to, I'll spread the parts around and put them on something else and, and not feel bad about it. Because they're all, whatever, decent parts, nine speed Tiagra, uh, Alex DA28's wheels laced to Sunrace hubs that are cartridge bearing style hubs. So, you know, none of it's high end, but it's fun. And bikes are supposed to be fun. And I think making this goofy little YouTube show is fun. And I'm glad that you've come here to have fun with me. My name is Josh Gone. This is Erie Bicycle. Thanks for coming by. Please come back again. And if you like that sort of thing, stop by my website and have a look at my goofy little punk rock pins and my line of coffee that I have roasted right here in Erie. And it helps support the channel because, you know, this stuff isn't free. And it's nice to take a, just a little bit of the sting of the cost out and share a little piece of Erie with you. I'll see you next time. Thanks. That wasn't supposed to. That wasn't supposed to happen like that. I was supposed to do a wheelie and ride past.